I am not only bewildered, I feel betrayed. You know, if BB did make a mistake, which is debatable now because we have learned that he did tell the White House before he accepted. But even if you weren't, imagine that a friend of yours is in fear for his life. He comes to your door to beg you and to tell you what the situation is. And you say, gee, you didn't knock. You know, there wasn't proper courtesy. You <laughs> failed in the etiquette of entering but my home. Worse. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Rabbi Benjamin Blick, and uh, he was on Cavuto there, uh, stating very eloquently his uh, passionate feelings about what's going on with the Benjamin Netanyahu controversy. Professor at Yeshiva University, internationally recognized educator, religious leader, lecturer, and best-selling author. And the rabbi is here with us. Hello, sir. Hello. Pleasure to be Pleasure here. Pleasure to meet you. Okay, Thank so you. Um, this, this isn't getting any better. I mean, yesterday we had the Congressional Black Caucus through various members say, uh, to Benjamin Netanyahu, in effect, don't disrespect our president. And I, I, I sense racial overtones there. Um, and the specter of them and other Democrats either not showing up or worse even, uh, from an optics point of view, leaving as he starts to speak, I mean, that would, that would just send a terrible message to, throughout the world. Bewildering more than anything else. Here is an administration that refuses to name our enemies. They still don't want to say radical Islam. That's terrible because it might be offensive to Muslims. And to offend the leader of Israel, who represents the only democracy in the Middle East, who shares our values, who's been an ally for all these years, to disrespect him in such a way based on what principle? Dignity of the presidency, the president who had time to have an interview with a woman whose only claim to fame was, was green, YouTube yeah, and, and that lips, she yeah. ate breakfast cereal in, in the tub. bathtub. She yeah. had time for that. Yeah. The level of disrespect and enmity enmity to the leader of Israel who only wants to come to Congress because he was invited right. and who was anxious to take up this invitation because for Israel it is existential. It's a question of survival. Doesn't anyone remember that Iran said when they get the bomb, which it seems like they're going to get thanks to Obama, the first thing they want to do on the table is Annihilate destroy Israel. Israel. Yeah. Annihilate Israel. And you know what? The world never took seriously the threats of tyrants. Absolutely. Now, Hitler didn't conceal what he wanted to do. Right. He wrote a book about it. And what does the world say? He can't mean it. Nobody can possibly mean that kind of right. evil. So <laughs> the problem is that they Chamberlain. mean it. Right, yeah, absolutely. But look, this president, I mean, from the days of hanging out with William Ayers and Rashid Khalidi and others, we knew, some of us knew, who he was, what his feelings were. And who his priest was, right. Jesse Jackson said before he was elected in 08 that if, if Obama's elected, Israel's not going to have as much control. I'm paraphrasing. This was in a New York Post story. Not as much control over the situation in the Middle East anymore. This was not unexpected. And from day one, all along in his relations with uh, Netanyahu, this is how he's behaved. This isn't like brand new. Which is why it seems so ludicrous when people say, Bibi can't come to speak because it's going to upset the president and <laughs> harm the relationship. Right, how relationship? much worse can it get? Right, right. Now, it's a matter of Bibi saying to himself, I may make the relationship bad. It is bad. On the other hand, what's the risk factor involved here? The risk factor is Kissinger pointed out to a congressional hearing that we, who committed ourselves to not having a nuclear Iran, and made a commitment to Israel, so much so that Israel, when it still had opportunity to bomb, didn't, didn't right. because of this firm commitment on the part of the United right. States. And it will never happen, they say. So now it's happening. Kissinger said he didn't want to criticize the administration. He's a tremendous diplomat. And he said, it seems we've already come to admit that we're going to accept a nuclear rent with just a time frame. And the time frame, amazingly enough, is a year for them to be able to actually finish the job. And it would depend on inspections to see yeah. whether yeah. they're living up to their word. The expect inspections will take a year and a half, but they have a year to produce it and, and, and to destroy Israel. And here's the thing. Here's why you, I don't think you could trust Obama. Iran at this moment overthrew, helped overthrow Yemen. They helped kill those soldiers uh, with Hezbollah shooting you know, inside of Israel. Uh, they can continue to undermine our interests, and Obama is still making nice with them. So, so it doesn't matter what Iran can do no wrong in Obama's eyes. 
Do you know that Obama had an interview on the 1st of February on CNN with Farid Zakar? Yes. And he says, the problem is the media is overplaying all the fears uh, because there is no fear of existential survival right. really to the United States. But there is a fear, <laughs> fear of Israel. existential survival yeah. for Israel. Plus, Israel is always the canary in the coal Absolutely. mine. Absolutely. And they're going to come for us after they get exactly. to them. Rabbi, a pleasure, sir. Keep My it up. Pleasure. Thank you Thank very you. much. All right, folks, we're coming back. White House correspondent for Newsmax, John Gizzi. The question is, will he have the hat on or will he be sans hat? We'll find out. <laughs>